Hi, my name is Sarah Hall, and I have been teaching Hebrew and Old Testament for Gordon-Conwell as an adjunct professor since 2006. And while I've taught all different kinds of classes, um, Hebrew, exegesis, I want to talk today a little bit about why I love introducing people to the story of the whole Old Testament in an Old Testament survey class. Jesus said that every teacher of the law who has become a disciple of the kingdom of heaven is like the owner of the house who brings out of his storeroom new treasure as well as old. So according to Jesus's metaphor, God's Torah, his instruction, is an older treasure and the way of the kingdom of heaven, the new covenant way, is a new treasure. And the wise teacher brings both of them out of the storehouse to be used and enjoyed. And sadly, too often in the modern church, we have, for a multitude of logistical and theological reasons, um, too often we've tended to leave the older treasure in the storeroom in a back corner. It's challenging um, to feed God's people a balanced diet of the whole con uh, counsel of God, to change my metaphors. But if we don't do that, the church becomes undernourished in some pretty important ways. I think one of the major obstacles that we as Christians face when we come to the vast, varied collection of Old Testament books is that we're just kind of overwhelmed and we tend to feel embarrassed and insecure about how much we don't know about the Old Testament. And that's why um, whenever I teach an introduction to the Old Testament, I try not to assume anything. And we incorporate lots of fun, visual, kinetic, mnemonic ways of keeping the history and the details straight. Because it's challenging, it's a lot of story, but it gives us so much confidence um, to get some of those key markers in place, chronological, geographical, um, and then we can start to get our heads around the big picture, the whole story of the Bible. So just as one example of uh, one of the tools we use to, to get the details straight, um, when we talk about the return of God's people from their exile in Babylon to Judah, um, the return of the uh, inhabitants of some of the inhabitants of the southern kingdom, we learn that there are actually three waves of return, three groups of people who return from Babylon to Judah. And we keep them straight. Um, by remembering who leads each group. Um, Co-opting the finger trick uh, of the old nursery rhyme, here is the church, here is the steeple, open the doors and see all the people. So we're gonna use this uh, to remember the three leaders of the return. The first is Zerubbabel, temple, Ezra, people, Nehemiah, walls. Zerubbabel leads the first group back and he, um, that group oversees the construction of the temple, the second temple. Then Ezra comes back with a group of people and he's focused on the holiness of God's people in this new season. And then of course Nehemiah notably comes back and inspires and leads the people in the reconstruction of Jerusalem's walls. So Zerubbabel, temple, Ezra, people, Nehemiah, walls. And we use um, tools like this not only because kinetic tricks help us to remember uh, the details of the big story, um, but also because we want to be equipped to teach God's story, the story of the Old Testament, um, to saints of all ages. Paul says that the Torah, God's Torah, and he's speaking specifically of the wilderness stories, was written down for us on whom the end of the ages has come. So it's a bold claim that the Old Testament actually has as its primary audience the Messianic New Covenant community. Um, so I just love being able to give people that family inheritance um, to remind them of this treasure that's in their own family storehouse and, uh, and bring it out to be understood and enjoyed.